the pillars of creation, the horsehead nebula, the cosmic caterpillar, the whirlpool galaxy, the ultra deep field. These images have inspired millions to fall in love with the beauty of the cosmos. And while the James Webb Space Telescope is well on its way to do the same, let's not forget how important the Hubble Space Telescope still is for astronomy. Launched in 1990, it has been operational for over 30 years. In that time, it has made more than 1.5 million observations and over 19,000 peer-reviewed research papers have been published on its discoveries. One of the things that makes Hubble so special is that it's the only space telescope that was ever built to be maintained and upgraded while in orbit, and so it was able to continue to operate for so long and produce better and better images over time. The history of the Hubble Space Telescope can be traced back to 1946, way before NASA existed and not a single spacecraft had ever been launched. When astronomer Lyman Spitzer published a paper titled Astronomical Advantages of an Extraterrestrial Observatory. In this paper, he discussed the two main advantages a space-based telescope would have over any ground-based telescope. First, there would be no atmospheric disturbances. The best nights for ground-based observations are cold and dry because moisture in the air could slightly blur the image and make observations difficult. The second advantage is that space telescopes can observe in all wavelengths of light, while Earth's atmosphere absorbs most gamma rays, X-rays, ultraviolet and infrared radiation. And so a ground-based telescope won't see much in these wavelengths. Spitzer devoted much of his career advocating for the construction of a space telescope. And the work of astronomer Nancy Grace Roman, often nicknamed the mother of Hubble, was incredibly important as well. Well before it became an official NASA project, she gave public lectures on the importance of a space-based observatory. She became the first chief of astronomy at NASA and wrote to the United States Congress throughout the 1970s to push for continued funding for the telescope. Missions such as the Orbiting Solar Observatory and the Orbiting Astronomical Observatory in the 1960s and 70s demonstrated the importance of space-based telescopes for astronomy. It wouldn't be until 1978 that US Congress would approve funding for what was then still named the Large Space Telescope. NASA was aiming for a launch date in 1983. In that year, the telescope was officially named after Edwin Hubble, the astronomer best known for confirming one of the greatest scientific discoveries of the 20th century, that our universe is expanding. The construction of the telescope took years longer than planned, which is not that unusual for these sorts of projects. Hubble is a reflecting telescope. It's basically a giant tube with a 2.4 meter mirror sitting at the end. The light reflected by the mirror into a second smaller mirror and then into the telescope's cameras is how we get the images. Hubble observes the universe in ultraviolet light, visible light and near-infrared light. Hubble was finally launched on April 24th, 1990. The mission seemed to be going swimmingly, until after a few weeks it became apparent there was a problem with the telescope's main mirror. Due to an engineering mistake, it had been polished into the wrong shape. And this caused the quality of the images to suffer. The curvature of the mirror was off by 2 microns, or 1 50th the width of a human hair, and this made the images slightly blurry. While the images were obviously better than those of ground-based telescopes, the mirror flaw was especially bad for imaging weaker light sources, and so the telescope couldn't do a lot of what it was designed for. Luckily, the idea had always been to do maintenance and upgrade missions to the telescope, and in 1993 the problems with the mirror were mostly solved during Hubble's first servicing mission, and astronomers could finally start to do proper work with the machine, 10 years after the initial launch plan. During the decades that it's been operational, Hubble has helped scientists make some of the biggest astronomical discoveries ever made, and it has helped to refine or redefine a lot of knowledge and ideas about the universe. Thanks to Hubble data, we know that the universe is 13.8 billion years old. The rate at which the universe is expanding has been determined. And it turns out it's not just expanding, but doing so at an accelerating rate as well. It was discovered that a black hole resides at the heart of every galaxy. It helped scientists create a 3D map of dark matter. Hubble has imaged nebula, newborn stars, galaxies, galaxy clusters, and even exoplanets like never before. And this does not only make for gorgeous pictures to share with the public and fuel people's interest in astronomy, but this has helped scientists understand how these objects came to be and how they evolve. 
The telescope has made amazing discoveries in our own solar system as well, including moons of Pluto and water vapor on Europa's surface. There's probably no better way to kick off the list of Hubble's most beautiful and inspiring images than with this picture of a star being born, still wrapped in its cocoon of interstellar gas and dust. It does resemble a caterpillar of sorts, except this one's tail is over a light year long, swept into this peculiar shape by the blistering stellar winds coming from nearby giant hot stars. The protostar in this image is still in the process of collecting mass from its surrounding cloud. It will take hundreds of thousands of years before nuclear fusion will set the star alight for the next few billion years. Pictures of so-called stellar nurseries are some of Hubble's most famous. This image released in 2020 to celebrate the telescope's 30th birthday shows an area of intense stellar activity in the Large Magellanic Cloud, a satellite galaxy of the Milky Way. The group of sparkling stars at the center of the bigger red nebula are 10 to 20 times more massive than our Sun, and their ultraviolet radiation and highly energetic stellar winds are heating the surrounding gas and blowing the cloud into bubble-like structures. The shimmering blue cloud is caused by one massive star as it has blasted off its outer layers, making it 200,000 times brighter than the Sun. The colors in these sort of images are not what the human eye would see. But if you could, the colors indicate what the clouds of gas are mostly made of. Blue areas are hotter and consist of oxygen. The red gas is cooler and indicates the presence of hydrogen and nitrogen. Hubble's sharpest view of the Orion Nebula consists of 520 images in five colors, taken between 2004 and 2005. The nebula lies only 1500 light years away and can be seen with the naked eye in the famous constellation of Orion. More than 3000 stars of various sizes appear in this image. The four massive, young, and hot stars at the heart of the nebula are nicknamed the trapezium, and their extremely energetic ultraviolet light carves a cavity in the cloud and disrupts the growth of hundreds of nearby smaller stars. Some of these stars still have a disk of material surrounding them, and over time, this material will form into planets. In the upper left, one young, massive, and immensely bright star hollows out its own space in the nebula. If you follow the wisps of gas and dust to the bottom of the image, you can see dozens of much dimmer and redder stars. These are brown dwarfs, stellar mass objects too small to ignite nuclear fusion in their cores. Their faint light is caused by the force of gravity crushing down and heating up their inside. These stars have never been seen in visible light before Hubble observed them. We don't live long enough to be able to study a star from the moment it's born to the moment it dies, but there's enough examples of all life stages of a star all around for us to get a pretty good idea. The Orion Nebula is one of the closest star-forming regions to our solar system, and so it's the perfect laboratory to study stars in various stages of birth, life, death, and rebirth. It looks like a storm of absolutely cosmic proportions is brewing. Powerful radiation from young hot stars located beyond the top of this image have slowly eaten away at this nebula for millions of years. Ultraviolet rays heat the edges of the cloud and the gas is released into space. Radiation causes the hydrogen gas to glow, and this produces the intense red halo around the pillar. Bluish-white light from the surrounding stars shimmers in the dust. Over time, all but the densest regions of this nebula will erode away, and it's believed that in those dense pockets of gas and dust, stars and planets will form. This stunning image of the aptly named Bubble Nebula was released for Hubble's 26th birthday. It sits about 7,000 light years away in the constellation Cassiopeia. The seething young star forming this nebula is 45 times more massive than our Sun. Its highly energized stellar wind heats and sweeps up the surrounding cold interstellar gas and sculpts it into this bubble shape. The nebula is 7 light years across. The stellar winds slam into much denser gas in the upper left and are slowed down, and so the star sits way off center in the bubble. The striking blue comes from heated oxygen, and yellow clouds are mostly made up of hydrogen and nitrogen. The star is about 4 million years old, and because it's so massive, it only has 10 to 20 million years left to live. 
it will likely end in a supernova explosion. The material blasted back into space will eventually condense into new clouds of gas and dust, and new stars will be born as a result of this cosmic recycling program. This dramatic view of a colorful, windswept pinnacle of dust lies 7,500 light-years away in the stellar nursery of the Carina Nebula. The surreal shapes of the pillar are caused by nearby stars blasting the cloud with their violent radiation and energetic high-speed winds. From within, the cloud is sculpted by bursts of gas coming from infant stars buried deep inside. Wisps of gas and dust pierce through the cloud, illuminated by starlight. The whole pinnacle is about three light years tall. For the next few million years, it will continue to erode and give birth to new stars and their planetary systems. The colors in this image correspond to the glow of oxygen in blue, hydrogen and nitrogen in green, and sulfur in red. What's perhaps unexpected is that if you could travel through one of these clouds, you wouldn't really notice you're inside it. The gas and dust isn't dense enough to be visible from within, unlike clouds here in Earth's atmosphere. Although denser than the space surrounding them, most nebula are far less dense than any vacuum created on Earth. A nebular cloud the size of the Earth would have a total mass of only a few kilograms. Hubble can image these clouds by taking several long exposure shots, which are stacked on top of each other and given color afterwards. The Horsehead Nebula is one of the most photographed objects in the night sky. It's also a part of the star-forming regions in Orion. This image pictures it in near-infrared light. In visible light, the horse head is dark and dusty and almost appears solid, but in near-infrared light it becomes ethereal and delicate. Infrared light has a longer wavelength and is less energetic than visible light, and scientists use specialized instruments to detect it. Hubble's gaze can pierce through some of the thick layers of gas and dust, revealing young stars emerging from inside the cloud. The horse head is a leftover of a bigger cloud of dust and gas that's slowly being eroded away by the searing light of nearby massive stars. This peculiarly shaped pillar is slightly denser, so it takes longer for it to disappear. It's estimated that it will be completely gone in about 5 to 10 million years. A raggedy shell of yellowish-brown gas surrounds a handful of blazing blue young stars in the star-forming region known as N90. It's situated in the Small Magellanic Cloud, a satellite galaxy of the Milky Way, visible with the naked eye from the southern hemisphere on clear dark nights. Sitting at about 200,000 light years away, this so-called dwarf galaxy's proximity to Earth makes it a great object to study. It's believed that galaxies like this can help scientists understand how galaxies first began to form in the early epochs of the universe. Studying star formation in the small Magellanic Cloud is particularly interesting because of its primitive nature. Heavy elements like gold, for instance, only form after a few cycles of star birth, death and rebirth. Since these elements can only be forged under extremely hot and violent circumstances like supernova explosions, and so they simply didn't exist for quite some time. Small galaxies containing fewer stars can give scientists clues to what our universe was like in the past. The handful of newly formed stars at the heart of N90 are suspected to be much like some of the earlier generations of stars to ever exist. Nestled in the heart of the Eagle Nebula, these light years tall columns of dust dubbed the Pillars of Creation are probably the most awe-inspiring subject of Hubble's imaging of the cosmos. The original picture of the pillars dates back to 1995. Using its upgraded cameras, the telescope revisited the nebula in 2015, by popular request. So popular, in fact, that it was one of the first objects pictured by the James Webb Space Telescope in its much sharper infrared view, revealing thousands of stars Hubble is not equipped to see. Either way, Hubble's view never ceases to amaze. This is what the pillars look like in visible light, dark, dusty fingers reaching into the universe, with many budding stars buried deep within. The blazing stellar winds of nearby massive stars have chiseled the pillars into their iconic shape. The peculiar protrusions in the head of the tallest pillar are called evaporating gaseous globules, or eggs for short. Eggs are believed to be the predecessors of protostars, and Hubble's first photo of the pillars of creation was the first time astronomers identified their existence, and so they were able to better understand the process of star formation. 
Straight out of the universe's treasure chest, we have globular cluster NGC 1805, with its stars shimmering like rubies and sapphires. Clusters like this can be found in almost every galaxy. The Milky Way has at least 150 of them. Some are among the oldest known objects in the universe, and are remnants of a time when galaxies first started to form. They can contain many thousands, up to millions of stars bound together by gravity. In the dense centers of clusters, stars are 10 to 1000 times closer to each other than the nearest stars to our Sun, making planetary systems around them unlikely due to constant gravitational disturbances. In this image, the striking difference in color stands out beautifully. The brightest blue stars shine in near ultraviolet light, and the red stars in near infrared light. It's not entirely clear how clusters like this are formed. Astronomers used to think all the stars in a cluster were born from the same cloud of gas and dust, but many clusters contain different populations of stars, their ages millions of years apart. Some clusters may have had multiple episodes of star formation, and some may be remnants of smaller galaxies captured by larger galaxies. In January of 2002, a rather dim star located about 20,000 light-years away in the constellation of the Unicorn suddenly had a huge increase in brightness for several weeks. Hubble captured a series of images of the light of this unusual supergiant star traveling through the surrounding shell of gas, a phenomenon called a light echo. Much like how sound bounces off an object, light from the outburst illuminates the gas that was likely ejected by the star in previous bursts. This sequence of images makes it seem like the star is blasting off layers of material into space. But this gas was already there, and what we see is the light reflecting off of the dusty layers. The cause of the outburst is uncertain, but it's thought that it was caused by a merger of two stars orbiting each other. Light echoes are commonly seen around supernovas, but this was not a supernova to be clear. The exact cause of the explosion remains poorly understood, since it seems to be a rare occurrence. It might just be a stage of stellar evolution that astronomers have not yet had many chances to observe and study. Hubble's view of the Butterfly Nebula pictures a star at the end of its life. The unusual way this star is shedding its outer layers as it runs out of fuel for nuclear fusion makes it look like the delicate insect it was named after. This is far from a peaceful scene, however. Those roiling streams of gas are heated to nearly 20,000 degrees Celsius and are tearing through space at more than 950,000 kilometers per hour, fast enough to travel from Earth to the Moon in 24 minutes. The dying star at the heart of all this fury was once about five times the mass of the Sun and is now unleashing highly energetic ultraviolet radiation that sets the cast off gas aglow. The star itself is obscured by a thick ring of dust. And this also causes the shape of the nebula, as it obstructs the outflow of gas. The star's surface temperature is estimated to be over 220,000 degrees Celsius, and the wings of the butterfly stretch for more than two light years. This is the fate of any star with significant mass. At some point, it can no longer fuse heavier elements in the core, and so it becomes unstable, and the outer layers are violently cast off. The result of a recent supernova can look like this. The famous Crab Nebula, located 6,500 light-years away in the constellation of Taurus. The supernova that caused the nebula was seen and recorded by Japanese and Chinese astronomers, and most likely by Native American astronomers as well, in the year 1054. The nebula itself was discovered in 1731, and so it was the first astronomical object identified that corresponded with a historically observed supernova explosion. This Hubble image is its most detailed view of the entire Crab Nebula. The colors in the image indicate the different elements that were expelled during the explosion. Blue in the outer filaments of the nebula is neutral oxygen, green is sulfur, and red is ionized oxygen. Zooming in, the tattered remains of the star somewhat resemble a coral reef in Earth's oceans. The eerie bluish-green glow is caused by the magnetic field of the neutron star, the crushed, extremely dense core of the exploded star. This neutron star spins at 30 times per second and sends highly energized beams of radiation into space. One of the most photogenic galaxies in Hubble's immense catalog, M104 is commonly referred to as the Sombrero Galaxy. Because of its brilliant white bulbous core and its belt of dark dust lanes, it resembles the traditional Mexican hat with its high top and broad rim. 
The sombrero lies at the southern edge of the Virgo cluster of galaxies and is one of the most massive objects in that region, worth 800 billion suns. The galaxy is 50,000 light years across and lies about 25 million light years from Earth. As we see it, the sombrero is tilted nearly edge on. Our view of it is just 6 degrees north of its equatorial plane. Embedded in its halo and dusty arms, there is about 2,000 star clusters, at least 10 times as many as in the Milky Way. In the 19th century, it was speculated that this galaxy was simply an edge-on disk of gas surrounding a young star. But in 1912, it was discovered that this object is moving away from us at 700 miles per second. And this was one of the first clues that the sombrero is a whole other galaxy outside of ours, and that the universe is expanding in all directions. This picture of the striking, swirling lanes of stars, gas and dust of the Whirlpool Galaxy cannot be left off of a list of Hubble's most beautiful images. This is Hubble's sharpest view of the Whirlpool, so nicknamed because of its grand curving spiral arms, where young stars reside, and its yellowish core, home to older stars. The Whirlpool shape is rather unusual since most spiral galaxies possess several loosely shaped arms that make their structure less pronounced. Some astronomers believe that this galaxy's arms are so prominent because of a close encounter with the small yellow galaxy seen here in the background on the right. It seems to be tugging on one of the whirlpool's arms, but in fact it's passing behind it. Gravitational interaction between these galaxies could be responsible for the whirlpool's classic near-perfect spiral shape, but it also creates a wake of starbirth. Gravity squeezes the dark and dusty clouds until they collapse and ignite in flashes of bright pink. The blistering winds of the largest stars and the blasts of supernova explosions sweep away leftover dust, and bright blue star clusters set the whirlpool's arms alight. This galaxy is located about 25 million light years away, and its proximity and face on view make it a great subject for study of spiral galaxy structure and star formation. Galaxy clashes are a common occurrence in our universe. Here, against a stunning backdrop of thousands of faint and distant galaxies, we see the twisted head and smear tail of UGC 10214, also known as the Tadpole Galaxy. The cause of this galaxy's messy appearance is a small blue galaxy still visible in the upper left of the Tadpole's head. Strong interactions of gravity between these two galaxies created the long trail of stars and gas stretching out for more than 280,000 light years. Numerous blue stars and star clusters were formed in the galaxy collision, seen in the tadpole itself as well as in the tail. Each of these clusters contain up to a million stars. They're blue because these stars are extremely massive, 10 times hotter and 1 million times brighter than our sun. Over time, the clusters will grow redder as the biggest stars age and burn out. The two biggest and brightest clumps in the tail will eventually become small, irregular galaxies orbiting the tadpole. This is Hubble's razor-sharp view of a group of interacting galaxies nicknamed Stevens Quintet, after the astronomer who discovered them in 1877. The name is a bit of a misnomer, however. Only four out of the five galaxies in this image are gravitationally bound to each other. The smaller galaxy in the upper left, bright blue and pink due to hot young stars and glowing hydrogen gas, is seven times closer to Earth than the other four. In this image, it's easy to see individual stars in this galaxy. The others are too far away to be able to discern any individual stars. The three galaxies in the upper right are clearly under the influence of each other's gravitational forces. They have distorted shapes, elongated spiral arms, and long gaseous tidal tails containing a myriad of star clusters. The gravitational disturbances have sparked a frenzy of starbirth, evident by the sparkling blue and hot pink regions in the two galaxies in the process of passing through each other. The elliptical galaxy at the bottom is less affected by the interactions of its neighbors. The four more distant galaxies are distinctly more yellow and red than the foreground galaxy, due to their population of stars being older, and perhaps also due to dust being stirred up in their encounters. This dramatic and chaotic image depicts two galaxies intertwining, locked in a gravitational embrace that will completely transform them. Once average spiral galaxies like the Milky Way, the pair have been in the process of merging for the past few hundred million years. 
The push and pull of gravity is so extreme that stars have been ripped from their host galaxies, forming a streaming arc between the two, seemingly connecting the yellow cores. In wild field images of the pair, we can see long filaments of gas and far-flung stars stretching for many light years into the depths of space. This is why this dynamic duo is nicknamed the Antenna Galaxies. This image is already Hubble's third of these galaxies. The first two date back to 1997 and 2006, and the telescope observed them once more after receiving new upgrades in 2009, resulting in its sharpest view yet. The clash of these cosmic titans seems incredibly violent, but it's not that stars are at risk of crashing into each other. Keep in mind, these kind of galactic mergers take many millions of years to happen, and stars that come close to each other would simply push each other away, or might start to orbit each other or form clusters. The turbulence caused by gravitational forces does cause an extremely high rate of star birth. It's suspected that all the present gas is being used to form new stars. Clouds of gas are seen in flashing hot pink and red, surrounded by the shimmering blue of star-forming regions, interlaced with dark batches of dust. This will not last forever, and over the course of the next hundreds of millions of years, the galactic cores will coalesce and the galaxies will end up forming one big elliptical galaxy. This will also be the fate of our Milky Way in the far future, when it will merge with our close neighbor, the Andromeda Galaxy. 2 billion light years from Earth, in the constellation of Draco lies rich galaxy cluster Abel 2218, composed of thousands of individual galaxies bound together by gravity. Scattered throughout the image are these arc-shaped patterns, examples of an effect called gravitational lensing. The cluster is so massive that its gargantuan gravitational field bends and deflects light rays passing through it, like a cosmic magnifying glass and so astronomers are able to see and study distant galaxies that could not normally be observed with the largest telescopes. These distant galaxies lie 5 to 10 times farther than the Lansing Cluster, and they already existed when the universe was just a quarter of its current age. Their light has traveled for billions of years. Images like this enable scientists to find out more about how the first galaxies came to be in the early universe. There's no way to tell what these galaxies are like right now. Due to the enormous distances in our universe, and the fact light has a finite speed, we're always looking into the past. One of Hubble's most spectacular views of gravitational lensing is this one named the Molten Ring. This is a great example of a so-called Einstein Ring, a truly strange and rare phenomenon. Einstein's theory of general relativity predicts that gravity can distort spacetime, and so a large galaxy or cluster of galaxies can bend light, which normally travels in a straight line. The difference with the previous image is that here there's an almost exact alignment of source, lens, and observer, and this causes the ring-like structure of the background galaxy around the foreground galaxy. The Hubble Space Telescope is a scientific instrument first and foremost, and one of the main scientific justifications for building it was to measure the size of the universe and test theories about its origin. And so astronomers let the machine observe a rather small and seemingly dull and empty patch of the night sky for 10 days, with a total exposure time of over a hundred hours, while most Hubble images have an exposure time of only a few hours. The result caused a revolution in astronomy. The first Hubble Deep Field shows almost 3,000 galaxies, a lot of which had never been seen before, and some of which formed when the universe was less than 1 billion years old. Scientists analyzed the image and found that Hubble had seen back to the very young universe, where those early galaxies contained the first generations of stars and had not yet had time to form new stars. Headlines dramatically reported Hubble sees back to the Big Bang, which isn't quite true, but quite close nonetheless. In 2004, after receiving upgrades, Hubble delivered its deepest portrait of the visible universe ever, the Ultra Deep Field. It reveals some of the first galaxies to emerge from the so-called Dark Ages, a time shortly after the Big Bang when the first stars set the young universe alight. The Ultra Deep Field shows the furthest away galaxies that can be observed in visible light, because our universe expands, light waves from extremely distant objects are stretched out during their long journey to us. Longer wavelengths of light appear more red, and this is a phenomenon called redshift. 
For very distant objects, their light is shifted so far into the red that they drop out of the visible spectrum altogether and can only be observed below red, in infrared light. It wouldn't be until the James Webb Space Telescope, which was specifically built for infrared observations, that scientists could look even further in the past of the universe. The future of the Hubble Space Telescope is uncertain. Over time, it slowly loses altitude because it orbits at the very edge of Earth's atmosphere and so it receives a small amount of drag all the time. Without interference, it will eventually fall back to Earth and crash. This is predicted to happen by the 2040s. This is a pretty major concern because the telescope is big and sturdy enough that some parts of it won't burn up in the atmosphere and they could potentially crash into populated areas. So obviously that's a bit of a potential problem. NASA's original plan for the telescope was to retrieve it using the space shuttle and to then put the machine on display in the Smithsonian Institution, but the space shuttle was retired in 2011 and it would have been a very costly and risky operation anyway. Another option would be to send a spacecraft to sort of guide the telescope down to Earth in a controlled descent. In December of 2022, NASA and private company SpaceX signed a Space Act agreement to investigate the possibility of sending a crewed mission to Hubble to service the machine and boost it higher into orbit, and so its lifespan could potentially be expanded for another 20 years. There's currently no plans for a direct replacement for Hubble as a visible light and ultraviolet light space telescope. There are many other space telescopes currently in operation for all wavelengths, but none of them do what Hubble does. The space telescope often considered Hubble's successor, the James Webb Space Telescope, was designed for observations further into the infrared, which is perfect for studying high redshift and low temperature objects far, far away in the universe. There never were any plans to upgrade and maintain the James Webb Space Telescope. Because of its operating distance from Earth, it's just not possible to send a crewed or robotic mission with the technology we currently have. Hubble won't last forever, but it's safe to say it will go down in history as one of the most important scientific instruments of the late 20th and early 21st centuries, thanks to the work and willingness of astronomers to share the beauty of the cosmos with the general public. By many, it will be fondly remembered as the telescope that inspired a deep sense of wonder and awe for our universe. There will be other, bigger and better space telescopes in the future, but Hubble will always have a special place in our hearts. Let me know in the comments what your favorite Hubble image is. It could be one of the list I just made, or maybe it's a completely different one. It's all good, they're all gorgeous anyway. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you soon.